Hi, I'm Carly with The Culture Project, and today we're gonna talk about the feminine genius. When I was younger, I would have called myself a tomboy. I loved wearing basketball shorts, sweatshirts. I loved getting sweaty on the soccer field. My favorite colors weren't pink and purple after someone asked me that. My favorite colors were actually orange and lime green. <laughs> I would have definitely called myself a tomboy. To this day, I still don't love wearing dresses, but would I call myself any less of a woman because of that? Of course not. At that age, I was no less of a female or a girl simply because of the things that I liked. So that begs the question, what does it actually mean to be a woman? What does it actually mean to be a man? Let's take a deeper look into what it actually means to be woman or man. In 1988, John Paul II wrote an encyclical called Mulieris Dignitatum. In that encyclical, he first used the phrase the feminine genius in a sentence that said, woman's special receptivity to love and to life is her feminine genius. Her receptivity to love and to life. Now, when I first read that and when I first heard that women are called to be receptive, I didn't quite understand what that meant. When I thought of someone who was receptive, I often thought of someone who was passive, someone who was relatively idle and just received everything that came to them in life someone who wasn't active or with ambitions, and as a relatively eager person, I didn't quite understand how that fit into my femininity in the story of my life. In fact though, receptivity can be active. Receptivity can mean receiving a very heroic call for our lives. Mary, the mother of God, who is the archetype and the model of all femininity, received a special call from the angel Gabriel in the beginning of the Gospel of Luke when he invited her to become the mother of the Most High God. When she received this call, she didn't just sit back with idle passivity and serenity and receptivity. In fact, the Greek words that she used, the Greek words that are described for her fiat indicate active and ardent desire. Mary was a person of passion. Mary was someone who had a fire in her heart. And even though she was receptive to her call, she actually ardently desired it. If you have passions and dreams and ambitions, it just means you're human. And in fact, it means you're on the way to becoming a fully alive human. Receptivity doesn't necessarily just mean being idle or passive. Humans are fully receptive before God. Humans were fully in line with God and his fatherhood, but when a picture was painted that God was more of a tyrant than a father, when God was someone who wanted to dominate us and control us and take our joy, why would we ever be in a posture of receptivity? Even though it was a lie, we chose to close. Receptivity and the vulnerability that it automatically assumes is something that's incredibly scary for us sometimes. Woman, by the very fact that her body speaks a receptive story, her body speaks of her receptive nature. John Paul II says that receptivity to love and to life is her special genius. The very fact that woman is receptive points us back to this reality that woman embodies what it means to be a creature before God, and that's something we rejected long ago. John Paul II calls for a new feminism, which means that, of course, women are equal to men in dignity and in worth, but a feminism that actually celebrates authentic femininity in all that women bring to the table, in her sensitivity, her motherhood, and her generosity. Whether or not you're a tomboy, a lot like I was when I was younger, or the most girliest of girls, you are still a wonderful woman who deserves to be celebrated in all that your feminine genius brings.